In this video, I'm going to give you eight reasons why I think the Quest 2 is the ultimate VR headset out there, even amongst PC VR headsets. The first thing I want to talk about is the design of the headset itself. One thing I really like about this is just the nice color. It kind of reminds me of the Oculus Go where it's kind of a more white color. I found that the original Quest 1 didn't look so nice. I don't know why, I just it, maybe it's a personal preference, but I feel like the design of this is very compact, sleek, and really blends into people's homes. Now, one thing a lot of people were not happy about was the head strap. And I feel like it got a lot of flack because people felt that it was very uncomfortable to wear this for long periods of time. Now that may be true, but the ingenious thing about the head strap is that you can wear this and you can lie down anywhere or like lean, lean on your couch without any bothersome material touching the back of your head. So this makes movie experiences very easy to watch. And that's one thing I'm going to cover later in this video is how good the movie experience is while using this type of head strap. I don't think this is a very critical flaw of the device because you can simply exchange as a head strap. You can upgrade it to the premium one, which, you know, in some cases, if you're mostly going to be playing VR gaming for long periods of time, it's probably a good thing to do. From my experience, I'm totally fine using the Velcro head strap. One nice thing about it is that it actually makes the whole device a lot smaller, so it's easier to move around. It doesn't have a large footprint. I never had to readjust it. I just set it once and I was able to put it on and off many times with easy comfort. I will admit, I do miss the very comfortable, soft memory foam that was on my Rift S. This is the foam that was near your forehead. I find that the Quest 2's foam is kind of rigid and it kind of gets abrasive over a time when it gets more sweat. So it's not, it's not a deal breaker at all and it's totally comfortable to play for me in my experience. Number two is the controllers. And I have to say the controllers have gotten immensely better. And this I'm talking about in terms of the battery life and connectivity. When I was using the Rift S and the original Quest, I found that my battery would always be depleted. So every time I wanted to get into VR, I had to swap out the batteries, the AA batteries, and that was so annoying. I find that the battery life on the Quest 2 is immensely, significantly better than the original Quest and the Rift S. One minor improvement with the controllers is that I feel like the haptics, the vibration is a lot stronger and it feels really good in the hands when you're swiping away on Beat Saber. And the last thing about the controllers that is a huge improvement is that the battery covers don't fall out while you're swinging away playing Beat Saber. I noticed that on the Rift S and the Quest 1, the magnetic cover for the AA battery would always fall off and that would be extremely annoying. With the Quest 2, I haven't had this issue at all. The third amazing thing about the Quest 2 is the software experience. Everything is just a lot more seamless. Everything feels more stable. I noticed that when I was on my Quest 1 or my Rift S, Every time I wanted to play, there was some kind of glitch. I had to reset the device or I had to restart my computer on the Rift S. It was such a awful experience, so much friction to get into VR. I find that with the Oculus Quest 2, I never have any glitches. It's just very easy just to put it on your head and you can just go into virtual reality without a hitch. And later I'll be talking about virtual desktop, which is even better than Oculus Link, where you can play your PC VR games very easily. You just strap on your headset, open virtual desktop, Make sure your computer's running on and you can just play some PC VR games. I found that with the Quest 2, there has been a lot of polish into the UI since the original launch of the Oculus Quest 1. I find that being able to double tap and to see your surroundings is such a sweet feature. It's so helpful when you have when you want to get out of VR or put or go back in. Another amazing software feature is you can enable night mode and this reduces the blue light when you're playing Oculus Quest at night. And this is something that I really appreciate and I kind of wish that they would automatically turn on night mode based on the time of the day. Uh, I really hope that this feature comes out, but I'm very appreciative that I can play Oculus Quest 2 at night without disturbing my sleep. Hand tracking is very convenient, though not the most practical. It's nice to have an alternative input method in case you don't have your controller near you. Another attention to detail that is brought by the Oculus software is that you can orient all your software towards the sky. So if you're lying down and you want to browse, for example, you can reorient your software so that it's easy to view when you're lying down. This wasn't the case in the previous versions of Oculus Go and Quest 1. Another improvement with the software is that I find that it remembers my Guardian a lot better than the Rift S and the Quest 1 original. I find that I'm able to switch from my stationary station and then go into my room scale experience without having to redraw my boundary all the time. That was really annoying with the original series. With the Quest 2, you can just hop in from different locations and it'll just remember it. The fourth major upgrade with the Quest 2 is the sound quality. And wow, this is an amazing major improvement. I ripped so hard on the original Oculus Quest and the Rift S. They had terrible, terrible inbuilt speakers that had no bass, sounded very tinny and was not clear at all. When I put on the Quest 2 and I started Beat Saber or I played some other games, I was extremely impressed with the sound quality. 
Now the sound quality is not is nowhere near as good as the original Rift, which had kind of cost Porta Pro type of headphones that are hangling that kind of gently touch your ear. I really miss those and I really wish that they would bring them back with maybe an additional accessory or something like that. But the sound quality has immensely improved and I think it's more than sufficient if you want to do a quick VR session. But if you're going to play play for a long time, I do recommend putting on some, let's say, for example, Cos Porter Pro headphones, and that will give you a better experience overall. But there is some more friction getting into VR and having to put on the headphones all the time. The next major upgrade with the Quest 2 is the 90 Hertz refresh rate. And I know this is not an official feature yet. It's still in beta. There's still an issue with 90 Hertz when you're trying to use the Guardian system. Hopefully the developers can fix this. And what's even worse is that if you want to use Oculus Link, it will crash if you have 90 Hertz enabled. But this isn't the same case with virtual desktop gaming. To enable this feature, you'll have to use SideQuest, and then you can just simply hit 90 Hertz. And I found that this is an amazing experience. Everything is so smooth. Everything is so butter and just feels more realistic, especially when you're doing this through virtual desktop and you're playing wireless PC VR. Everything just feels buttery smooth. To be honest, it's very difficult to go back to 72 Hertz, which feels very choppy. And what's amazing is that this even performs better than the Rift S, which is only rated at 80 Hertz. So try it for yourself. Let me know what you guys think. I think this is an amazing feature and I really hope it becomes official soon. The sixth item that really makes Oculus Quest 2 stand out amongst all the other portable headsets is the amazing decoding movie experience that you can get on this actual device. Now, some people might view these devices such as the Oculus Go and the original Quest as movie consumption devices. And I find that with the inbuilt strap, it makes it very easy to lie down comfortably or you know, sit down on your sofa without having anything on your back to disturb you. So watching movies is experience. But one caveat with those previous devices, those previous generation devices, was that it could not decode 8K or 6K video. It was just so slow. It would never be able to de decode like HEVC or H.265, which are the more advanced codecs. Uh, it just did not work at all. It was super sluggish. However, with the Quest 2, it is it completely blows decoding out of the water. You're able to watch high high quality videos at a very good frame rate without any stutter. So I'm very impressed with the decoding. The new CPU chip that is on the actual Quest 2 is extremely fast when it comes to video performance. And let's face it, we're not going to theaters anymore due to the current health events. So being able to have a theater in your home is a very nice addition to your home entertainment setup. This brings me to my next item, and that's the screen quality and the IPD adjustments. From the Rift S, I think this is an upgrade. You're able to adjust the IPD physically. It's only fixed to three positions. I have it on setting number two, and I don't have any issues with my IPD, but I hope that this will actually make it easier for a lot of other people who have different IPD. I find that the field of view has improved. This is kind of amazing. Being able to see more in terms of the width, that, that's a very big improvement, especially coming from the Rift S. And I also found that the actual quality, the resolution, the screen door effect has been greatly diminished that you barely even see the pixels on the screen. So the screen looks amazing. The only lackluster thing about it is the black colors. The blacks don't really stand out. They're not punchy like OLED displays, but you can't get everything. And I find that playing games, even though it's it's kind of sucks, it's not the end of the world. The next thing I want to talk about is wireless PC VR gaming. Now, this is an amazing bundle value you're getting. You're going to get a PC VR experience that I would argue is better than the Rift S, the native Rift S. I made a whole video dedicated on how I was able to set up my virtual desktop such that I'm able to play PC VR games wirelessly, no more wires, and with very good video graphics. So definitely check out that video. I'm going to put a link in the description to that. I'm going to explain how it's all set up and everything. But this is one of the main things why I think the Quest 2 is a game changer. You're not only going to get 90 hertz, which is a smooth experience, you're going to get PC VR wireless gaming. It pretty much looks like native gaming in my experience. Effectively, you're going to get a portable device and also a PC VR headset. So it's a two-in-one bundle. I don't know why anyone else would want to buy a different type of headset. This is amazing. You can you know, bring it to your friend's place and you can play you know, Beat Saber uh, on the go. But when you're home, you can pair it up with a beefy PC machine and you're going to play the amazing experiences like Half-Life Alex with awesome fidelity graphics. So that's it for this video. I've highlighted all the amazing things about the Quest 2. Yes, there are some issues with the screen where the blacks are not that great, but I hope that in the future iteration, this continues to become the norm where PC VR and portable VR gaming experiences come into one device without any compromises. Thanks for watching this video. Please let me know if you have any questions about my experience using the Quest 2 on PC VR or portable gaming. Do give a like, it really helps other channel, and I'll see you in the next video.